three Hezbollah drones unsuccessfully targeted the private home of Prime Minister Netanyahu and his wife Sarah in Kesaria. Neither of them was home at the time of the attack. Two of the armed UAVs were shot down while one struck the ground damaging property without causing injuries. Netanyahu described the attack as an attempt on his life, and he said that Iran will be held responsible for the attack by its Lebanese proxy. Iran issued a statement distancing itself from the attack. Over the long holiday weekend, Hezbollah fired hundreds of rockets targeting northern Israel. In one deadly incident, an Akko man in his 50s was killed and several others injured in a barrage fired at Haifa Bay. Damages were caused in the Upper Galilee and Western Galilee, which faced waves of rocket fire with most shot down by air defense or falling harmlessly in open areas. The ground operation and aerial strikes continue to degrade Hezbollah's strength in Lebanon. The IDF offensive is continuing, aimed at decimating Hezbollah positions near the Israeli border. Troops raised the Israeli flag at a recently captured Hezbollah outpost. Five soldiers for the Golani Reconnaissance Unit were killed amid the ground offensive. An officer and several soldiers were wounded in the ground operations. Airstrikes have decimated much of the Lebanese city of Nabatea, and targeted strikes have been renewed in the Hezbollah stronghold of Dachia in a suburb of Beirut. IDF chief Hertia Levy said that some 1,500 Hezbollah fighters have been killed since the start of the cross-border conflict, with most coming during the recent ground operation and during the decimating waves of airstrikes aimed at missile and missile launching capabilities. The body of slain Hamas leader Yechia Sinwar is being held in Israel following a forensic examination that gave positive proof of the identity of the man who ordered the October 7th massacre. The army released footage of the exact moment Sinwar was targeted by IDF tank fire in a building in South Gaza. The IDF has now also released captured video surveillance footage of Sinwar and his family taking shelter in a tunnel on October 6th. Following the killing of its military and political leader, Hamas sounded defiant, saying that the 101 Israeli hostages still held in Gaza would not be freed until the war ends and Israel fully withdraws from the territories captured during the war. Both Jerusalem and Washington expressed cautious optimism that Sinwar's death could hasten the end of the war and the release of the hostages. Prime Minister Netanyahu is reportedly holding consultations on the future of the war following Sinwar's demise. It's day 380 of the war in Gaza. The IDF is conducting a major operation in Jabalia in northern Gaza. Over the past day, at least 50 Palestinians were reported killed in airstrikes and in clashes with ground forces. At the same time, Israel is increasing the flow of supplies to the Strip's much battered north while pressing on with the renewed offensive there. Experience the power of truth with ILTV News. If you're looking for quality content and captivating visuals, join our news community and become an integral part of our team as we embark on a mission to unveil the real Israel, dismantling the web of lies and misinformation that surround reporting on Israel. By subscribing to ILTV News, you will not only have access to the latest updates, but you will also amplify our message, creating a ripple effect that carries the truth far and wide. Subscribe today and help reshape the narrative. Available on the web, Android, and Apple.